Welcome to the Foundation's Conversation at Home program. I'm, La I'm Greg Braxton from the Los Angeles Times. The Foundation has set up a COVID-19 program to assist union performers who are going through tough times. Since March of 2019, thanks to your donations, the Foundation has given more than $6.5 million to more than 7,000 union performers and their families who have needed help. If you're a SAC after a member and need assistance, please ask. And if you can help out, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video. Thank you very much for your support. And now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Ashley Thomas, star of Amazon's new series, Them. Let's get right into it. Um, Let's do it. Uh, Them is, of course, about a, a family in the 1950s who uh, moves to California, to East Compton, to escape a lot of terror in the Jim Crow South, and they encounter even more terror when they try to settle and start a fresh new life in their new home. Uh, it's getting a lot of attention, also uh, stirring up a bit of controversy, which I want to get into also. But I wanted to, first of all, get your reaction when you first saw this material. Uh, what was your immediate gut response when you saw you know, this was this was definitely going to be something that was uh, pretty pretty out there and pretty horrific and a lot of a uh, lot of uh, strange things going on. To be honest, I didn't know. You know, like like most actors, I just received a, a breakdown um, from my agent, and it said basic kind of what you you're saying. It said a family move from North Carolina in 1953 to Los Angeles and um, forces both real and supernatural. It had a, it had a, it had a, like a, like a log line like that, right? So um, I can tell the full story. Like I, I had to do a self tape for it, right? So um, I kind of did half the self tape and then I went out because it was in the middle of summer in London and I promised someone that I'd meet them. So I wanted to do it any, any actor will know I had to do it before I lost the light, not edit anything, just do it before the light had gone. So I've kind of half done this self tape and then ran out and then had a plan to come back and finish it and get it sent off. And then um, the day just took long. I just remember I was just out and, and then the light faded and then I got home and, and I just had this self tape in the back of my head that I needed to get out. So I ate, me and my friend ate, and then I sort of put the tape together and then sent it out. And I didn't really, think much of it at first um I just sort of like was on autopilot and done it sent it off and then my agent called me and was like there's some excitement for you um they want to send you the scripts to read so I was like okay cool so so I read so I get the scripts I get one to three and then um so I read the scripts and then I'm like ah oh, this is um this is deep and I'm thinking, I'm shook now, you know, like now there's interest, I'm scared, I've seen all this material, I'm scared now, because I'm thinking, do I have all the layers and gears inside of me to be able to deliver this part? And um, yeah, I, I, I was kind of, I was, I was, I was scared at first. Um, Are you yeah, a horror just, movie fan? I, I wouldn't say that I'm like a, like a deep, more. I, I'm more like a casual fan. You know, like I, I watch, I watch horrors. Like I was into, when I was younger, I was into it. I was into, well, I wasn't into it. I was scared of it. Let's not, let's not, <laughs> okay. let's not pretend. Yeah, let's yeah, get yeah. that straight. <laughs> yeah, let's get that straight. You know, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, um, Candyman. These, these are films that, that were more of my era, right? When I'm growing up, so I'm scared of these films. Um, so I wasn't scared of the horror element. Though. That wasn't what was scary for me. It was just like the real, the real elements, the 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 civil rights elements, the the the, the racism, the 
the hatred, the prejudice, and just making sure that I could I, I could play that authentically because it's it's a real story. The piece carries carries like a lot of weight. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm responsible for this character and make sure that I could, yeah, I could do, I could do Henry Emery, who is the character and them who I play, like make sure that I could do him justice. And it's a lead role. There's responsibilities that come with that as a lead actor. This is the first time that I've, I've, um, I've played just the out and out lead myself and Deborah, my co-star. Yeah, it's just loads of, there was loads of feelings that I was experiencing, um, when initially reading reading the piece, and then I didn't, and then it asked me to come for a screen test. I was trying to swerve the screen test. I was doing all sorts of stuff. Just I don't know what I, I don't know, man. Just the fear. I was just scared of. I was just scared of the character. And then I was watching um, an interview um, with Mahershala Ali. So I watch a lot of interviews of actors that that I admire, right? So I'm watching an interview with him, and he's saying that when he's scared of a piece, that's the piece that he runs to. That's that's the piece that he will do. So I was just like, man, maybe that's the approach that I need to take. I've identified that I'm scared of this piece. This is probably the piece that I should be doing. And um, yeah, and then I had some friends who helped me. That's why it's important to just keep your actor friend, like they're not even actor friends, just friends around that can support you. And then, yeah, and then I went, I went, I went for the screen test and then um, that's a whole nother story. I could tell that, but that's another story. Well, what was the screen test like? pressure oh my god i don't know listen this is what made me this is probably what made me scared in the first place right i've been for screen tests before i've got i've got the job so i've got the job a few times flown out to los angeles got the job right then there was a job before i'm not gonna mention the job but i didn't get it i flew 11 hours boom thought i was gonna get it got down to the last two and then they went another direction and i feel like that that sort of rejection jolted me and then, and then I had a fear of just like screen test after that. And like, just, I didn't want to fly and do a screen test. I just didn't, I don't know. This, this is what happens, man. You just get one rejection, even though I've got a history of like, you know, a ratio of really booking a lot of roles and stuff after a screen test, but just that one rejection now just, is in my head. That was right? in your head. That was in... it's got me stuck. It's got me stuck. So yeah, I, I, I was just, yeah, I was just scared, but so I went to the screen test. It was about an hour and a half, met little Marvin and uh, Junior and Libby, the casting directors, and they were just, everyone was just cool. It's like, it was one of the times when I really felt in a room that they wanted me to, to get it. They wanted me to, to go through the gears and, 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 get, and get, the, get the part. So um, yeah, it was about an hour and a half and little Marvin said to me, as far as I'm concerned, you're the character. And Whoa. Then, that's so great. That's uh, that must have blown your mind. No, no, this was like Dave Matthews. He was the showrunner as well, executive producer. He said, "I'll see you in eight weeks." Listen, I've been in rooms before, and they've said like, shook my hand, and it's just like, amazing <laughs> job. Like, you're the guy. Oh, you're so amazing. And then you leave, and then you don't hear anything, or you don't get the job, right? So I'm. I've been in rooms, man. Actors will know, man. I've been in rooms, and I felt that. And you, you leave that room feeling like you got the part. So I've stopped leaving rooms feeling like that. So when they wow. told me that, I was just like, nice one. Yeah, cool, man. Good to meet you, and and kept it moving. But then um, told my agent, and he was like, man, I wish they didn't say that to you, man, because you know what that does to the actor, right? And then I left. And then um, my, I'm friends with um, like an actress called Robin Thede. We're like, we're really close. And um, she invited me to her show called The Black Lady Sketch Show, which is an HBO show. And um, so I just went to watch the screening, but Lena Waif was the moderator. She was hosting the panel. So um, I, watched the, I watched the panel and stuff. And then after I go meet Robin and then Robin says, oh, you should meet Lena Waif. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. And I was ready to just be my typical British self, not say anything, just like, hey, nice to meet you, shake your hand, keep it moving. So she's like- At least Lena Waithe is, for, for people, Lena Waithe is the executive producer of them. Of them, right? Boom. So she says, this is Ashley. And then Lena Waithe's like, finishes the sentence. She's like, Ashley Thomas, like, da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, she, 
record that she knows she was like yo you just come from the screen test for them right boom, boom, boom. and then i was like yeah she was like yo like we like what you're doing listen you're doing the show and i was just like I, it was just a weird experience i just didn't know what to think and she she like she was mad cool she got her phone she like showed me emails like she was like ashley thomas like she was just showing me mad love and then um went home met with, uh, had a meeting with Amazon that they kept on pushing by 30 minutes. So I just thought, oh, now it's awkward. They don't want to give me the job. They don't want to meet me. I'm thinking all this insecure stuff. And then I got to the meeting, had a great meeting, got to the airport, got a call from my agent. And he just went on this long story, Craig Shapiro, great guy. And then he was just like, look, man, congratulations. You got the job. And I was just like, <laughs> And then I just start, and then I just, I just started crying in the airport. I was in, I was in the lounge. I just started, I just started crying because just for me, this was like the role of a lifetime. Even though I was scared of it, it's like I felt like I went to America, did the screen test, and then, and then I got what I wanted. I got like one of the dream roles. You know what I mean? A dream part for me. And what it did show me was that, like on the other side of the fear, like when you conquer your fear, like some great things can happen to you. So you can get what you want in life. You know what I mean? You can achieve, yeah, you can achieve your dreams, I would say. So yeah, just conquering fear. That was an important, important lesson for me, man. But then when you get the job, that's that's the thing, right? When you get the job and that, like you lead all the way up to the job. You want it, you want it, you want it, you want it, you want it. You get it. And then now, now the real work starts. Now know? the real hard stuff starts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. what was it about Henry that you felt connected to? What was, what, what was your way into this character and, and what was it in your experience that, that made you feel like, yeah, I can, I can uh, capture this guy? So what attracted me to Henry was that we've got a black man who is multi-layered, got a lot of nuance to his character and this is, and he loves his wife, he loves his, children unconditionally he has a job he's he's college educated he's a ex he, he he's he's a war veteran he's a positive guy like a stand-up guy loves his family works hard he's present emotionally present physically and this is like a this is an image that we don't typically see a lot of times in the media of of black men right so it was like a chance to really to really have an opportunity to play that. And my characters before they had layers and stuff and I would add, try to add as many layers as I, as I could, but I had played previously, I had played like a lot of street dudes, a lot of gangsters. Um, and then as my careers progressed, I was able to play like a cop and a detective. And then I've been quite lucky to be honest with, with, my, with the roles I've been able to, to get. Um, so yeah, this this just was a chance to play play the protagonist, play someone who was who was positive, an image that I don't see. So that was what was really appealing appealing to me. Um, it's always it just it it's always interesting to me when we see British characters playing Americans, and you're you're younger than this character. It's another country. Uh, mm. It's a different era, but yet you just seem like so perfect to for this character and and nobody would have known is it what is the process when you're just going into a whole other character that's so foreign for to 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 use a word or or so different from your own personal experience what i had to what i had to do when playing a character when i do any character stripping away the ego is very important for me and I think makes for for a bet for a better actor for like a and that's what I did I stripped away the ego and what what and when I say that what that means is I approach the character like I don't know anything I don't know anything about the world I, so that I have to do the work in order to play the character and in stripping away that ego what I what I had to um, except was just because my skin is black doesn't mean that I can play every role, right? 
I have to put in the work in order to play that role. I can't just automatically show up. Okay, cool, great. You have a grasp of the American accent. So that means you can play the character. No, you have to approach the character with respect and no ego. So with that, I knew that, okay, cool. I've experienced certain things in the world um, being black and some of those emotions and feelings, I know that I can extrapolate into the character, right? But then on the other side of that, I had to accept that um, that the Black American experience is a unique experience, right? And that there, I don't know everything. And there is, there is, there is, and there was more of a gap in my understanding. And in order for me to bridge that gap, I had to, I had to, I had to put in the work. I had to be respectful of of the experience and speak to my family members, my cousins and, and close friends who were African-American who could help share their experiences with me so that I could, that would help to bridge the gap in my understanding. I had to read, do, do extensive amounts of research. I had to speak with an elder gentleman that I met who lived in my building. I was fortunate enough to even meet him. He was an older gentleman called Jerris. He grew up in Texas in um under Jim Crow and he, he had he, he had so much experience that he could share with me so with all those things then I could use myself as a vessel to inform inform Henry's decisions and every nuance so it was about really bridging the gap in 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 my lack of understanding and then then I could put, then I felt like I could give my you know my my interpretation of 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 the character of the character of course when we first see henry he looks like a a man who obviously loves his family is very devoted he seems very optimistic and it takes us a bit before we realize that henry's in a lot of pain and he has a lot of things going on inside of him and that comes out gradually but the intensity of of what he's going through inside is is pretty massive and he has to convey a lot of that emotion without saying anything he's very he's very insular um what was it like i mean is was that uh obviously you're skilled at that but what was the challenge in putting across that pain without having the the tool of dialogue. I think that's where a lot of the work comes in. You want to do enough research and work and speak to enough people. I work quite well by like watching documentaries and watching real people and speaking to people and doing, I'm just a workaholic, just doing extensive research so that when I get to the set, I can almost like let it go and kind of forget about it and, and, and get to work. Um, the challenges, what some of them were personal challenges for me because I, I really wanted to explore like physicality in the piece, in my face and in my body movements um, as I grow as an actor and um, saying less as well. That, that, was a, that was like a personal challenge for me anyway because I think when you first start out acting, at least for me anyway, you almost want to say more words. It's that you're feeling like there might be spaces of gaps and stuff. And you're trying to say extra words to get your point across when you don't need to say the word. You know what I mean? A look, a look can like a look with your eyes or like, or like a, a body movement or something could tell 10 words and you didn't even have to say anything. So for me, Henry was had a lot to do with his eyes and what he was thinking in the moment, and a lot of what he was suppressing needed to be conveyed without without the dialogue. So yeah, so it, it was just about making sure that that was reading without being overacted, and that I was living the truth of the moment. So when I'm really feeling, when I'm really feeling tense, or I'm really having to bite my tongue, like really do that, really have that feeling inside me. And um, I think that's what this that's what this piece is, especially with Henry. It's about the subtle nuances that he had, and I wanted to take 
it was written on the page, but personally as the actor and as the character, I wanted to take everyone on a journey. So you see him at one stage and then you follow, you, by the end of the piece, he's a different person and you see him changing throughout gradually. Episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You see him slowly changing and then you see those smaller, those smaller little um, micro movements become bigger and bigger and bigger and just, yeah, you just really read into his face is really what I wanted for the character. And I hope, I hope people got that from the performance that just the small, the small subtle things. That, not only don't you have dialogue, but there's so many times that the camera is right up in your face. There's nowhere oh. to hide. Yeah. So uh, you've got to, to convey that truth so directly and, and, and there's no faking it. Was, was, uh, how was that for you? Yeah, you gotta be honest and that's, <clears throat> I think just as I've been growing as an actor throughout my career, um, I'm always trying to get to the, to the truth and get to the honesty. And, and, and I had to get into the, I know some actors don't like to watch themselves. And I used to tell myself that too. Like, I don't like to watch myself. But I think my dad told me something really interesting. He was like, look, man, if you expect people to watch you, you need to be able to watch yourself. And I was just like, what? So then, <laughs> yeah. my dad just regular. He's not in. He's not into TV and film and stuff. This is just like some some life. So, yeah, just some West Indian bars he was just giving me. So just yeah, I just said right now I need to watch myself. So I will watch myself back and see. Sometimes I can see actually you're not being honest in that moment. You're trying to go into your not in not in them. I feel like them was my has been my most honest performance of my career so far. But I just think that that's the key. You know what I mean? Not relying on, trying not to rely on tricks and stuff, like really be in the moment. But that's why you do the work. And that's why I do acting workshops with my friends and still, like, I don't think just because I'm the lead of a show and I've been working real, a lot and series regular and working, I'm still rehearsing, acting, doing workshops with my friends and and just, trying to improve and get better all the time and get get stronger and more honest and you you create this this toolkit i think you create this toolkit with loads of different tools and then like you approach the character in the moment and you're trying to find this tool and it's like yo this doesn't work okay this doesn't work okay art right, this tool right here works for the character or this moment and then build the scene and be into the character that's kind of that's kind of how I do. I, I want to talk a, a bit about the dynamics on the set of a show like this, because, of course, you're dealing with racism and your family, the Emory family, is under siege mm. from your hostile white neighbors who don't want anything. They want you out. They want you gone. Uh, and you're working with actors, white actors who are conveying some very rough, tough things to you and saying racist things to you. Obviously, they're not racist, but still, they're connecting to something and you're connecting to something about being a Black man who's being attacked. What is it like in those scenes when you're confronting that kind of kind of situation where you're dealing with people and I mean, do, do you not have anything to do with them before the scene or, or how is it, you know, when you're really trying to convey something, but you guys are at war. I folded into my family, my onset family. So I was really close with Deborah Ayurinde who plays Lucky. And I would connect with, the, with I, my thing was to just stay with the family, stay interacting with the kids, stay interacting with Deborah, stay close to, 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 to them. Cause um, it just made it easy. It made it easier for me to not fully interact with the neighbors that were antagonizing, to be honest. Um, it just made, so it just made it, it made it uncomfortable 
for real on the set. And they, and and let's not get it twisted. They were like everyone was nice. Like everyone oh, was absolutely. nice. Everyone was cordial. Yeah. Everyone was pro- professional. Right. But but just th- you have that extra layer of unfamiliarity when you take that process. You know what I'm saying? But also at the same time, I am professional. Like what what I do tend to say and I, and I fully believe in is that my my process shouldn't infringe on anyone else's process and their process shouldn't infringe on mine. Do you know what I mean? And try to find a, a common a common space when working. So if someone needed to run run the scene or run the lines, I'm not going to be like, no, I'm not running the lines with you. Don't even talk to me. It's like, all right, cool. Let's run it quick. Like, let's get it quickly. And then I can go back into my zone. Do you know what I mean? Right. So yeah, it's just about, to, yeah, it's just about being professional, in the and I, I always just think that, man. I think if you're a professional, then things are are cool. Uh, yeah, I just don't believe in someone else's process infringing on mine or mine on theirs. Do you know what I mean? I don't, yeah, I just don't. I don't. That does that to me. That don't work for a good work environment for me personally. But that might work for some people. But like, if you need to slap, if someone needs to slap someone, like I don't need you to slap me in the face full force. Do you know what I mean? I need, like <laughs> we're acting, bro. <laughs> like this. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I stayed away. I stayed away and just folded into the family. I know, so sorry, that helped. Long, long way. So that helped you, yeah. and so you were a- able to really just sort of get into the essence and and the core of that scene and what what those scenes were all about because they're. You know, we see you being just really. Uh, there's one scene where you're being tortured. Uh, it's very intense, and these these guys are out to do you great, great harm. Uh, and obviously, in real life, they they don't mean that. But you know, it's it's got to be it's got to be tough. That, that must be a tough day at the office when you have to do things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It's, yeah, it's tough, but I wanted to make sure that I did a good job. (laughs) And there are people that really went through things like this. So I'm an actor, I'm on the set and I am going through these emotions and I am, I am telling this story and it is traumatic and it is triggering and it does bring up some things in you as well at the same time because you know we have um generational trauma as well like just for things that have happened and in in the past and my family are from my family are from the caribbean they're from jamaica and dominica and my ancestors have experienced slavery as well on the islands and my grandparents came to the uk in a wind rush and have experienced racism here and so, so I'm carrying that as well when I'm performing. Um, but I got a story to tell. So even though I'm going through all these things, I'm just trying to service the character. I'm trying to make sure that I tell the, char- the, the character's story as best as I can within whatever um, tools and talent I have inside of me. I'm trying to use that to tell, the, to tell it the best way that I can. So I wasn't really, even though it was hard and it was tough and they're saying these these derogatory terms and 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 it's physically draining i'm just like i gotta tell this story that's all i'm thinking i gotta tell this story right there's no excuse i want when people when anyone watches them or they watch this performance that they are into it and they're with the character and 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 they and they're rooting for him and and they want him to win and they're they're crying with him and they're they're laughing and they're loving the, the 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 moments of levity I just wanted everyone to be with the character. So I wasn't, I wasn't even concerned for myself in that way. Like I just, and I think I, I, like I, I hope that people are taking that from the performance. I've got, I've had people hit me personally and they're really reaching out and showing love and that. But yeah, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't thinking about myself. Man. I just, that's what I'm saying. I just tucked away the ego and just got on with the work that was most important. Of course, them premiered last Friday, and and it's got quite a bit of reaction. Uh, uh, many viewers have said that it's one of the scariest things they've ever seen. Uh, but there's also been some controversy about some of the material, particularly some of the violence, uh, which 
a lot of viewers have found very troubling, and uh, some have said it, it, it crosses a line, that there's some images in there in the show that they consider particularly horrific. Uh, there's a lot of uh, damage to black bodies in this show without getting into specifics, but you know, your, your family goes through some really horrible things. So what do you feel about some of the reactions that the, the violence in the show uh, may go a bit too far? I think that people don't realize that a lot of the material in them is taken from real life scenarios and things that have happened. Um, and I think that what's on the screen is not, is nowhere near as, as violent as what has truly happened to people from our community for years. So to this, to, to now, to modern day, you know, that people are getting shot and getting killed in America in particular, but around the world as well. There are black bodies that are being abused in much more violent ways than is shown in them. So we need to be this same energy that people have for them in that way, we need to have it for everything, for, for, for the real stuff that's happening. That's how, I, that, that's how I feel, you know, there's things going on. Listen, I'm not a, I'm not a scholar in that way, but I, I, read my, I read my little bits where I can and try to learn as much as I can. But around the world, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of suffering. So we should concentrate on that. So bottom line, what are you hoping that, that viewers get from this show because there's a lot going on we have history we have horror we have a family drama but what would be your hope of of what viewers get out of them they take away some understanding of some of the horrific things that have happened to our community um and have more compassion when interacting with us because we all got to live together harmoniously so i i would want that this adds to the conversation and can push push equality forward and more progress because I think that we've we've come a long way um, in terms of social equality but I feel we've got a lot further to evolve um, it's just as as humans as a global community um, and I would hope that people yeah just take away more compassion more understanding treating each other like equally and like human beings, because there's a large number of people that don't believe that, um, you know, people outside of their own community deserve to be equal or deserve to be safe or deserve to have an opportunity to, to be successful. And I'm not, when I'm saying successful, I'm not just talking about like acting and trying to be superstar and stuff. I mean, just everyday work and trying to provide for your family. So. Yeah, I would just hope that it adds to the conversation in that way. And um, also that it's, you know, that it's entertaining, that people can watch it and get from one to 10 and and and, get, and, and enjoy the show for, for what it is in terms of the cinematography and the story and the music and the performances from the entire company, but also individually that they can get into Lucky's performance, love Henry's performance, love the girls. So, so loads of things and that they could take away the black love that we're seeing from the family because it's not it's not only black trauma that the show deals with what the show does show is it shows a man and wife that are deeply in love with each other and parents that love their children and a family that stick together so it's got it's got multiple layers and elements and i would hope that people that people take that away as well not just con not only concentrate on the violence which is an element of the show but it's not it's not all of what the show is about. There's, it's got loads of other things. So I wanted to ask you, Ashley, how, how uh, did you get, how'd you get your SAG card? How'd you get into, uh, you know, I, your start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got my, my SAG entry on the night of, which was a HBO Ooh. show. Oh, and, I love uh, that show. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great so show. I, thank you. Great show. Riz Ahmed, who was very, very gracious and taught, also inspired me in how to be the lead on a show, like in, in terms of taking care of other actors and, you know, like someone who's working for one day or someone who's a recurring character and spending the time and rehearsal and making everyone feel feel comfortable to do their best work. And that's how you get the best scene. And I learned that. I learned a piece of that from Riz and some other great leads that I've, that I've had the opportunity to work with. But yeah, I got, I got um, my SAG entry with um, The Night Of. I got Taft Heart lead and then, and then I was able to, then I was able to join the union, which I was very, very thankful for. And I remember being broke as well. I had no dough, I was broke. <laughs> And like, I like the initial, there was like a fee that you had to pay. And I, had to, I just had to ask, like, I just, I got to pay it in installments. Man. And then that was cool. But like, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad. Strong union. And it's been, it's been very good to me. And I, I know we've talked a lot about them, but what would you say of, of in your career? What's, what's been, uh, aside from them, what's been your favorite role? My favorite role yeah, prob- to, to be honest, it's probably between the night of, I played a character called Calvin and that was my first experience of working in America. And I was working in New York, which is to me, like such a like, magical city. I love it there. And um, yeah, that, I think that was probably like my favorite. And it, it, was, it was two episodes, but it was just, the experience was dope. Steve Zalian was great. James Marshall was great. These are people, and, and these are people like they always reach out if they see me and something and show love. And then working with Riz was sick as well. And he was like so kind and stuff. Yeah. So that was probably my, it's probably like my, my favorite job outside of, outside of them. Them is definitely my, my favorite job into, into this, to this day. But night off for sure great well i can't thank you enough for for doing this congratulations on the show congratulations on your performance uh and i look forward to your next project thank you so much ashley been great talking to you thank you appreciate you man nice